In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. 
And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let us take a moment uh, to prepare ourselves in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you and we ask that you would help us to quiet all that is around us, that we might hear with our ears, see with our eyes, know with our hearts what it is that you would have us see and hear and know. God, we come before you as a nation that is trying to figure out how we go forward, trying to stay safe and yet move into a new world. And so we ask that you speak to us and we ask that you help us to hear. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the beginning, the earth was formless and dark. In the beginning, God created God saw, God said. In the beginning, God called it good. Somehow that really struck me this week as I began to think about this sermon. How do we hear that it is good as we look at our world? And that led me to thinking, how did the Jewish people who were in exile for generations hear it is good? as they were in captivity in a foreign land? How did those caught up in the evils of the Holocaust hear these words, the beginning words about the Holy One? It is good at Auschwitz. It is good at Bergen-Belsen. It is good at Dachau. How did people who ran slave ships hear it is good? Or how about those who were stolen or sold into captivity, who were brought to a land and schooled in a different tongue and taught a different religion, whose holy book started out with God proclaiming it is good when so much of their lives weren't good. How do we living through this worldwide pandemic with all its isolation, all its spotlight on inequalities of risk and protection, all its randomness. What do we think as God looks at this world and pronounces it good? And how do we balance what has happened in this country for over 400 years? even with the imprimatur of the religious community at certain times and in certain places, to those who are of color. With the beginning of Genesis, the beginning of the Holy Bible, the beginning of the story of God and God's world, how is that good? Oftentimes how you start off something sets the stage, the first impression, the starting line, the beginning is important. See what these first lines bring up for you. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. 
a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The Star Wars films. Four score and seven years ago. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Straight out of Compton. That's as far as I'm going. NWA. God saw that it was good. And it was evening. And it was morning. Another day. Genesis. This isn't just how the Bible starts out. This is the frame for everything that comes afterwards in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in our lives with our God. Now, for those who read only the Old Testament, the beginning of Genesis is something that is read every single year as part of the Torah reading. It is something that everyone knows almost by heart. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God said. In the beginning, God saw that it was good. So how do we hear it was good? Is it a fact, a scientific observation because God created it and God is good, it must be good? It is an opinion. Or the way an artist looks at their works and sees a masterpiece? Is it a blessing? Does the voice inflection turn up at the end as if not so sure as if hoping against hope, it is good? No, I think it is a challenge, a command, a fist held high in the air. It is good. I created it for good. I meant it for good. All creation, from first to last, from the seas and the skies and the ground, from the things that crawl to the things that swim to the things that fly, each living thing, each one, good. It is good. It is beautiful. It is precious. It is unique, it is rare, it is mine, it is good. Maybe that is what we need to hear in this time of division and hate speech and infernal lies and military style policing and people who shouldn't be dead dying. Maybe we need to remember there is good that God created this world good and that we are supposed to hold on to that promise with all that we have and to fight for that vision with all of our might. This week I listened to, as President Obama said he was hopeful because he looked at the protesters and saw a multiracial, multi-age contingent. That's what it's going to take to get a step closer to good. And I listened to Reverend Al at George Floyd's funeral shout out like the prophets of old, calling out the reality of injustice, calling out the anger and hurt and waste of it all. Get your knee off my neck. That's what it's going to take to get a step closer to good. And I breathed in the words of Reverend Barber of the Poor People's Campaign, reminding us that you only protest that which you think can be changed. So don't lose hope because that's how we get one step closer to good. It's important to remember in the beginning there was God and not much else. In the beginning, God wanted to create and God created. And God created not just one thing, not just two things, but an abundance, a, a plethora of different things, 
funny looking things and beautiful things and small things and large things and majestic things and mundane things. And, and then God looked at all of the things that God had created and nodded God's head and said, yes, it is good. People of faith have something to say right now. And I know that less and less of our neighbors and friends think going to church has any value. But I think people of faith have something to say. Because we face twin viruses, corona and racism. And neither one is going to get fixed quickly. We as people of faith have a history of walking the walk, even when it isn't exciting, even when there aren't crowds of others, even when it seems darkest for our world, for ourselves, for our faith. We know the truth that God is with us as we strive for justice even in the valley of the shadows. We know that God somehow, some way, leads us in paths of righteousness and near still waters so that we may drink our fill. We know God provides daily food. And we know God anoints us to be God's people together, rich and poor, male and female and non-binary, black and white and brown, even Democrat and Republican. No matter where we came from, no matter our immigration status, no matter what we call the one who created in the beginning, we are one in Christ Jesus, Paul tells us. And we have the stirring words of the prophets from ages past, like Micah, what does the Lord require of us? And Amos, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. And we believe that God created our world, that God cares so much about our world that God came and lived among us as one of us willing to die like we die, that we might all know the power of resurrection. That God is not something just in the distant or even near past, but God is the God of the present and the future as well. And that God as spirit continues to dwell with us and blow embers into us and comfort us and sustain us. We know the power of movement, but we also know the power of stillness, of listening for God's whisper and listening to the stories of each of our lives. We know that the spirit was given not to the special, not to the few, not to the elite, but to everyone. The power of the spirit fell on each and every one. And sometimes, especially in the midst of a time when it is still dangerous for some of us to gather with others, it's important to remember that each of us does not have to play exactly the same part. Many have used the image of running a marathon when talking about our fight with this pandemic. And I would add that it is equally true for fighting institutional racism and the rot of American society from institutional white supremacy. You have to train differently for a marathon than for a sprint. But not all of us are runners. If you've ever watched a marathon, there are also those very important people who line the roadways mile after mile after mile. Some bring water, some bring signs, some wait hours just to encourage the runners, those at the front and those who lag behind. 
there are some of us that can risk being in large crowds in tight spaces. But all of us can figure out ways to be a part of this moment in history. Raise your voice on social media. Use your privilege if you have it. Lend support with your money or your time. There are a variety of gifts, just as there are a variety of people. And each gift is needed. Each person is needed. Each of us is called to do our part to take another step toward being what God intended. Good. So this week, remember, in the beginning, in the beginning, through until the end, God claims and cajoles and cries out, let it be good. May it be so for all of us. Hallelujah. Amen.